हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू दि फोर्थ यूनिट दट इज रेलवे इंजीनियरिंग दिस इज योर सेकेंड लेक्चर इन दि फर्स्ट लेक्चर वी सॉ अबाउट वॉट इज रेलवे इंजीनियरिंग वॉट इज इट्स रोल राइट एंड वॉट आर इट्स फीचर्स राइट सो इन दिस लेक्चर वील बी स्टडिंग अबाउट वॉट द गेज वॉट इज गेज राइट and then we'll study different gauge on uh, indian railways we have certain specific gauges so what is gauge we we'll first understand and we'll say which are the types of gauges in we use in the indian railway right uni gauge policy and its benefit so what is uni gauge and policy and then we'll see the its benefits right this is three things that we are going to see in today's lecture right so what is gauge gauge these are your rails right these are your two rails right these is your brown color ones are sleepers okay so the distance between inner gauges right in to in distance right the in to in distance between the gauge between the rail right into in distance of the rail is called as gauge this is very important right and it is uh, specified right you can't change that distance if you change the distance then the train cannot move over that track right there should not be any changes in that gauge distance right this is very important term in the railway engineering so you understand what is gauge gauge is nothing but it is in to in distance right inner surface to the inner surface of the two rails right there are two rails uh, so that uh, the distance between the two inner surfaces is called rail gauge right gauge of a railway track is defined as a clear minimum perpendicular distance between the two inner faces of two rails between the inner faces of two rails right this is is this is what gauge is so we'll see the different types of gauges right in india following gauges are being used depending upon the topography of area and other factors such as cost of construction volume traffic of nature development of area and speed of the train if they ask on what factors does the uh, gauge of the railway depends then these are your various factors but uh, before going to that we'll just see the different types of gauges first is the broad gauge right first is the broad gauge second one is the meter gauge and third one is the narrow gauge in this image there is no narrow gauge and this standard gauge is not been used in india right it is just to show you how the different gauges are right how the distance varies right so we have what broad gauge meter gauge and narrow gauge that we can uh, simply call it as bg mg and ng right so we'll study in deep about these three types of rails gauge right we'll study in deep about those it means that broad gauge means that clear horizontal distance between the inner surfaces inner faces of two parallel rails forming on the track is 1676 mm the if this is your rail right this is your rail and this is your one more rail because i have less space in the mobile i can't draw to the right but don't go for the scale just see the this distance in the case of broad gauge will be how much it will be 1.676 or 
1.676 mm. In the case of broad gauge, it will be 1.676 meters. The distance will be the distance. Right? The distance will be between the two rails will be 1.676 or 1.676 mm. Right? That will be the distance. This is the highest gauge that we provide in Indian railways. In Indian railways, it is known. It is also known as standard gauge of India. The gauges that you saw in the previous image as standard gauge, which was different. That is for different countries, right? In India, the standard gauge is what the broad gauge. The another name for the broad gauge is standard gauge. This type of gauge is recommended when sufficient funds are available, and hence better revenue are bright. Means will get. If there are funds to do it, you will do it. But once you do it, you will get a better revenue from it because the width is more. Means the capacity of the trains also will be more, right? So it improves the quantity and mass, right? In it is generally used in the plain areas and having more density of populations. And better prospect of development means these type of gauge are used in the areas where the area is plain, where the population is more, and there are there is a better future of development. Where there is a future of development, where there is going to be development in higher rate. So there we are going to provide broad gauges, right? Next is the meter gauge. So meter gauge is provided. It means the clear distance between the inner surfaces of two parallel rails forming thousand meter means what a meter. So one meter. The name itself says it is one meter. This type of gauge is recommended where the chances of income are less and funds are insufficient. Right? These are provided where. And the chances of income less and funds are insufficient. There we will go for meter gauge. Next is narrow gauge. It means that the clear distance between the inner face of two parallel rails forming a track is either seven six two or six one zero mm. It differs. If it is six one zero mm, then the gauge is referred as feeder gauge. This is type of gauge provided in the hilly areas and the area with a less population. Right? In the case of hilly areas, there will be more sharp curves and steep gradients. As such, the broad gauge cannot be constructed. Moreover, chances of revenue are not bright. Right? The feeder gauge is generally provided for supplying raw materials to the Big governments and private factories such as sugar factories and steel plants. This type of gauge uh, is used for used for developing the poor areas. So, narrow gauge is seven point seven six two mm that you are going to provide. If you are going to provide the feeder gauge, these are for the development of poor areas and for the separate factory tracks. For some factories, you need a A uh, separate track for the raw materials to be directly transported to the factories. In that case, we are going to provide the feeder rails gauges. Right? These are the three types of gauges that we are going to that we have studied. Now, what is this unique gauge policy? Unique gauge policy means one gauge policy. We are going to provide all over the country one gauge. We are not going to provide three different types of gauges. Right, we are going to pr provide only one type of gauge, that is broad gauge. Why we are going to do this? Because if you provide different gauges at different places, then if a person wants to go from one place to the another place, for an example, only one example I will give. Right, if a person wants to go from the one place A to place B, place A has broad gauge, place A has a broad gauge, so there will be no problem. He will go to the station. He will. Take the ticket and he will sit in the uh, train. As he moves towards the station B, right? 
at some intermediate point he has to change his train so if you want to change the train you have require a station again right so there you are going to get down from the broad gauge you go to different platform where a meter gauge has been provided the train has been standing that in that you are going to go and sit again and from there you are going to again go to your place b so due to this what happens it becomes very rigid right you have to take your goods if it is good vehicle then you have to change for the goods and transport the good uh, loading and unloading of the goods have to be done every time when you want to change the gauges people have to be transported from one place to another place so you require extra station points and it's so extra all the requirements the uh, what the station has all those to, has to be provided right extra people has to be uh, taken in consideration coolies requirement is more to uh, load and unload the goods right when you are trying to unload and load the goods from one gauge to another gauge there are chances of theft right so all those things come up and the transport facility will be disturbed and the time required will be more in the emergency conditions that becomes a very huge problem changing of gauges so we have come up with the policy called one gauge one track right means all all, all over the country we will be having one type of gauge so that all type of trains can move anywhere they want except in the case of hilly regions except in the case of hilly regions we can't do anything about the uh, in the hilly regions we have to go for narrow gauge there right so now we are not using meter gauges anywhere we are using only broad gauge everywhere except in the hilly regions in the hilly regions we are going for narrow gauges so so if we provide uh, unique gauge policy if we do go for unique gauge policy what are the advantages i told you the disadvantages of uh, different gauges right the same thing will come here it will avoid the delays and hardship of the passenger to change from to change from the broad gauge to meter gauge or meter gauge to broad gauge or narrow gauge right the delays and the hardships you have to get down from the train then Uh, go to the foot bridge, come down to the next platform, and then get into the meter gauge, meter gauge trains. So that is a hardship that is to be done, that is avoided. As transshipping is not required, and there will be no breakage of goods and theft of the goods. Right? It saves the labor expenses for loading and then again loading the uh, luggage from one train to the another train. Right? Possibility of theft and misplacement. while changing from one vehicle to the another is eliminated right large sheds sheds and storage goods are not required right for when you are loading and unloading from one place to another place if the broad gauge train has come today at 6 o'clock in the evening right but the meter gauge train timing is at around 12 o'clock at the night so till then where are you going to keep this goods that you have unloaded because that train will go again back at that time you require a large sheds and goods area where you are going to keep these goods so that area is not necessary those those sheds are not necessary now right so that expenses becomes less labor strike etc do not affect the service and operation of trains in the case of unique uh, non unique systems where there are two different type of gauges if suppose there is a strike of labors so no labor will be there so who is going to unload the goods and store it in the good stations uh, sheds and again load it in the other train so that becomes a if there is no uh, labors then uh, the operation of the train stops there instead so there is no stoppage now because of the unique gauge unique gauge systems provide alternate routes for free movement of traffic Results in reduced pressure on a tra- track, on a one track, right? Locomotives can be effectively used for all the all the tracks. See what happens is if there are different gauges, their train cannot be used. The meter gauge train and engine cannot be used in the broad gauges because the width of the road rail is larger here, as in the case of meter gauge. 
so that track uh, train cannot move over the broad gauge right so that will be reduced right you can use the locomotives engines efficiently duplication of the equipment such as platforms sanitary arrangement clocks people labors is avoided right it saves lot of extra expenditure and time is also due to the unigate systems development of all areas will be uniform resulting in the balance of economical growth right due to the military during the military movements no time is wasted in changing the personalis and equipment from one vehicle to the another if the gauge is uniform right this is what we studied in today's lecture that what is gauge what are the types of gauges we saw the explanation about the various types of gauges which type of gauge we use now that we saw and why we are going to provide only one type of gauge what is the advantage of it so we saw that also today right in the next class we will see the forward things or uh, that is about the permanent way that we will see in the next class